Hi folks, I uh, hope everybody's okay and uh, it's good to be with you uh, today. I just want to share with you, I had a debate with Bernie De Heller and uh, he's uh, uh, an atheist and he's debated quite a few Christian apologies so I'll get uh, on to that in a minute. I just want to say hello, I hope you had a good Christmas, I, I had a really good Christmas. We had about eight people and uh, it was great and uh, it was probably the best Christmas that I've had for a long, long time. And uh, I hope you had a good Christmas and, uh, you know, be encouraged. I've got a, a thought for the day to, to share with you uh, after this video. So just bear with me a minute. But it's good to see you and I hope you're OK uh, and God is good. Uh, I just want to share with you. I had a debate a, a day, a couple of days ago with uh, Bernie De Heller, and uh, he is a, an atheist. He has debated some of our best apologists. He's debated uh, recently um, Matt Slick. He's debated um, uh, Eric Hovind and others too. And uh, he's quite a, a very able debater. He has a certain methodology that he uses and uh, it can be quite effective um, and I've seen him uh, challenge quite a few Christian apologists in, in, in discussion. But I uh, debated him the other day a couple of days ago and I was uh, I, I used what is called the transcendental argument and basically I asked him I, I, I basically the transcendental argument is the idea that you cannot know anything without positing the existence of God. So if you uh, negate the existence of God, you can't really know anything. And I put within that matrix a, a kind of proposition that logic is something that, uh, from an atheist position, they can't really account for, and in the theistic position, that you can account for it. Um, <clears throat> If you watch the video, it's on my main page. I think that you'll find that it was, it gave uh, Bernie a lot of trouble. Uh, I think he struggled quite a lot to deal with the argument. Um, and so you'll find when you compare that video to a lot of videos that he's done, uh, this is one of the very few occasions where he's on the back foot and he's not really as confident uh, or as slick as he as he's presented himself to be uh, it's unfortunate that the video only shows him because it, there was actually two two of us on uh, two pictures that you could have seen and for some reason there was a technical hitch and only he could be seen on the video so i hope that he has a rematch with me and a, and a, a debate where people can see me and him uh, and uh, have a fair tussle. He says he'd like to debate or discuss on the issue of the Gospels or the Gospel or something. Uh, I'll have to get in touch with him on the technicalities of the of the proposition or the question in hand. But I found that uh, I, I did think that Bernie didn't really fully understand the argument. I don't think he fully grasped the implications of the argument for his position he came back at me the at the end with his old kind of scientific kind of questions that he likes to throw at christian apologist but by the time he got to that point the damage had already been done i'd already laid the foundation for the implosion of whatever he was saying uh, i found it quite refreshing i can i found the the debate quite refreshing and i found bernie very um very amicable a uh, very uh generally speaking a very uh easy person to talk to a nice person to to talk to in terms of having a discussion or or a debate so i appreciated that i appreciated the academic freedom that he, he allows that we're allowed to debate on equal terms and discuss where about 90 percent of the atheists on the internet don't allow academic freedom you can see that how where they've tried to suppress my voice over the last five or six years they've tried to stop me from having these kind of debates but when i'm allowed to to debate some of their best people then they they don't find it easy they struggle 
Uh, and that's why the atheist community have never allowed me to have formal academic debates with Aaron Ra and Thunderfoot and, and Richard Carrier and Dr. Price and people like that. But when an atheist apologist from time to time comes forward and allows me to engage with them, they they don't find it easy. They struggle. Uh, and they, I think Bernie struggled with this issue on, on the... Um, on the issue of the transcendental argument. I don't think that he was really grappling with the argument. And I, I nuanced it with the history of uh, uh, the, um, with the philosophy of history. Uh, and so I dovetailed my argument in, in with the philosophy of history. And he really couldn't, I, I think he struggled to, to to really understand the full implications and the full weight of what I was saying. And, and so what I want to say is that when people, when a Christian, uh, when an atheist apologist like that, who's, a, who's very professional in his demeanor, who has debated some of our best apologists, when someone like that comes along and, and gives me an opportunity to engage with them, they don't find it easy. And that is why uh, the skeptical community will not engage with me, will not debate with me, because they they know that that I'm not the most uh, intelligent of apologists. I I wouldn't say I'm the most educated, but I do try to read widely, and I do try to engage with the best scholarship of whatever particular topic that we're looking at, and they don't want. Uh, the public to see that people can be open-minded like that and to uh, engage with whatever scholarships around they want to uh, present to the public that we're mindless uh, anti-intellectual uh, kind of people and and that's the other thing as well is that you know I ha I, I, I had to uh, set up a website to present my views and a Twitter account, and also use my Facebook to present uh, my views because my public profile had been hijacked by the atheist community and, and was being presented by the atheist community as dishon in a dishonest way. So I've had to reclaim my identity. Um, they've take, they took advantage uh, worldwide, the atheist community, concerning my uh, breakdown and you know, when I made videos, when I'd had a, a nervous breakdown, they collected those videos and made an archive and then presented to the world that this is the Jason, that, you know, this is the crazy Jason, you, you shouldn't have anything to do with him. Not really presenting all the thousand, uh, the thousand of videos that I did, uh, at least a thousand videos of good scholarship uh, and sermons that I did, or many of those sermons and videos uh, are lost, and uh, I believe it, because of the conspiracy that was against me, uh, they took those channels away from me and stripped me of my scholarship and stripped me of my uh, academic freedom and presented to the world that I was some kind of crackpot rather than uh, acknowledging that I had a degree from Manchester University and that I... I I have been in academic circles for at least 10 years and can engage with the best on, on theological topics. You can see that the way they've tried to write my biography on some of their blogs, the, um, they've used my breakdown, uh, a mental breakdown uh, a few years ago uh, as a way of browbeating me and silencing me from having my academic freedom. Uh, you can even see that with Bernie. I mean, I, I really respect Bernie, but when I was about to mention about my degree from Manchester University, he didn't really want me to mention it to the public. He was about to silence me, but I pushed it and made sure that I told people that I had a good qualification uh, and that I knew what I was talking about. But I have to give him credit that at least he... He, he, he is given me the platform to have my academic freedom and to be able to discuss and debate. Uh, you know, I mean, he's debated Matt Slick, Eric Hoven, some of the, some of our uh, 
high profile best debater so that he's allowed me to do that you know is is allowing me to have my academic freedom uh which has been suppressed for so long amongst the skeptical community worldwide so i really appreciate that and i would put it to dan dan courtney i would put it to matt delonte i would put it to richard carrier uh we we'll put it to uh dr price um and people like that that if you ever want to engage in a proper scholarly uh academic way uh with, with the best scholarship in the field of historical jesus studies then uh next to some of the more professional people like peter williams william lane craig um James White, uh, there's nobody really who has researched uh, historical Jesus studies as much as me, and who could e who could easily engage with you uh, on on that on that topic, and um, it's scandalous that our best apologists like matt slick for example will debate anybody he won't just debate your best atheist he'll debate anybody anybody can go and talk to him anybody can debate him he doesn't care but yet someone like me who has a degree from manchester university someone who who's well read in uh, historical jesus studies your best like richard carry or dr price won't engage with me are scared to engage with me and not only scared to engage with me uh, even people like Aaron Ra, who doesn't have a degree in theology, who doesn't know anything about historical Jesus studies, or someone like um, Thunderfoot, or anybody, or any any of your major uh, YouTubers, or even your major uh, academics, won't engage with me because they're scared. So what they want to do is have an archive channel where they show this time where I had a breakdown, and they they use that and. Uh, and they say, look at that guy, he's crazy, and trying to destroy your credibility rather than just say, well, the guy made a mistake there, but actually he's got a degree, actually he's quite well read in this area, actually we do need to engage with the guy. Uh, actually he's not the way he is, actually he's changed, you know, this like attacking militant atheism, he's, he's changed, he's actually getting back to what he what he says he is is a is a a pastor preacher and uh and a christian apologist you know we all make mistakes we all fail and the atheist community shouldn't use that against me and shouldn't hold that against me but should take me as i am now which is a a person who just wants to engage in scholarship and not in 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 those times where i wasn't well where, where i wasn't what i should have been um so I thank Bernie for the opportunity of academic freedom and to be to be able to discuss. Uh, and when I was given that opportunity, as you can see on the video, he struggled. He didn't find it easy. And if I debated him on evolution, if I debated him on any topic, if he gave me time, uh, a few weeks or a few months to research, I could do my research and present to him my, my findings. And he would find it extremely difficult to engage with the cutting edge scholarship that would i would bring on any topic that he would want to engage with and we see that in the area of philosophy on this video i think the transcendental argument is an argument that is a is a powerful argument and it always gives the skeptic trouble they do not want to deal with it and uh, i i really are grateful to uh greg banson's um legacy uh greg banson's few debates that he had which i went over just before i, I, I debated bernie i went over those debates a tremendous heritage and a, and a tremendous encouragement even now to me I, I found greg banson's uh last sermon that he did as well that he preached for me to live his christ to die his gain and these debates that he did, I, I found them a tremendous, tremendous encouragement. 
And, you know, Greg Manson was a man who, who believed in academic freedom. He was a man well-read in philosophy and logic and, uh, and, and various disciplines, you know. And I believe in that. I believe in that. You know, Francis Schaeffer was a man who read, read widely. The seminaries that I've been to taught us to read widely, to engage in academic studies at a high level and to listen to the opponent and to engage with that. Uh, and and so, you know, I really appreciate the heritage of Greg Banson, uh, which was behind my discussion with uh, Bernie. So I just want to reiterate again, I want to thank Bernie for the opportunity to have my academic freedom, to be able to discuss and debate. And uh, I really appreciate that. I want to challenge the skeptical community worldwide and challenge you and say that you need to stop the small core of people who have tried to take away my identity, tried to take away my academic freedom by stealing my um, my uh, my videos, creating archive channels, allowing abuse on those channels, where some of my family have cried because they've seen uh, the comments that are being made, which is really just systematic abuse of a person, a vulnerable person who was not well at the time. And you as a skeptical community have supported that. You supported that abuse from Aaron Ra, Thunderfoot, DPR Jones, to uh, Dan Barker, to, um, to Bernie, to, to uh, all your major uh, Sherman, all your major Myers, all your major skeptics, all share in that systematic abuse of me and taking away my academic freedom, allowing those archive channels where they are presenting videos where I wasn't well, stripping me of my channels where I can't present all the scholarly videos that I have, I've done. So people are not able to see the scholarship that I've been able to produce. I produce more scholarly videos than any Christian apologist on, on YouTube, but you won't be able to find them because the skeptics have made sure that you can't find them. And that's why I've had to set up a, a website so that people can see that, that the way I'm being presented by the skeptical community is dishonest and is not right and not fair. You know, and... Um, a simple argument, like the transcendental argument, knowing that argument, knowing a, a bit about that argument, knowing the to's and fro's of that argument, being allowed to, to just sit and talk in a nice, friendly atmosphere, to debate in a nice, warm, friendly atmosphere with someone who is uh, cultured and wants to engage like Bernie. And what you find is... I'm able to present uh, a feasible uh, presentation of the defense of the Christian faith. And so I challenge any decent, honest, abiding uh, skeptic out there on any university campus, any uh, atheist uh, who is a professional debater, such as Dan Barker or anybody like that, to engage with me and uh, to promote academic freedom, to send a message that we can fail and make mistakes, but we can all move on. And to say, this guy has moved on and he needs an opportunity, a chance to move on. Let's debate. To provide an opportunity to engage in, in the best scholarship and to, to promote academic freedom and discussion. And to sideline those people who would want to just promote abuse and uh, and try to destroy someone's character, someone who was vulnerable at that time, rather than to encourage a person to, to move on 
in a more productive and a more holistic kind of lifestyle where to even develop relationships and uh, opportunities for uh, dialogue and discussion. I, I, I have always found the transcendental argument nuclear apologetics and uh, I found that Bernie Bernie couldn't really deal with it so but again I just want to thank Bernie I thank you for the opportunity of being able to discuss with you I found it very pleasurable and very enjoyable I thought you were very fair in in the discussion uh, and I think you you did put up some very strong arguments especially at the end but I, I think that you didn't really fully understand the implication of what I was saying, especially on the philosophy of history and how the transcendental argument would do dovetail into the philosophy of history and how that uh, negated evolution. So I ho hope that's been an interest to you. And um, I look forward to, in the next few year or two, to engaging with, in a professional manner, with some of the skeptical community but on a more academic front not on this kind of youtube uh lifestyle where you go on google hangouts and it's just about people's egos and and people trying to get famous and people trying to pull you down and stop you from talking and no i look forward to professional discussions in, in a more professional and, and considerate and, and thoughtful and caring mindset with those who are more professional in their manner and, and who want to conduct themselves in a professional manner. And I hope that Bernie has the courage to continue the discussions. And I hope that others such as Dan Courtney and maybe Dan Barker eventually, and hopefully Richard Carrier, I hope that those people especially the ones who claim to know a bit about historical jesus studies like dr price uh, i i hope that you might uh, engage with me at some point uh, on these topics so thank you for listening and um, please google greg banson study the transcendental argument and you'll find it a very powerful effective argument for the existence of god <clears throat> If you go on to uh, presuppositional, presuppositional Apologetics 101, you will find there uh, a lot of resources on presupp presuppositional apologetics. But also uh, go uh, to uh, Covenant Media. There you'll find a lot of Greg Banson's papers. And uh, I think Truthform, if you type in Truthform Greg Banson, you'll find a lot of interesting material there. Uh, by Greg Banson, some of his lectures and uh, notes and things like that. So really, really helpful. I found Greg Banson, I, I, having dealt with the skeptics for nearly six, five, six years on, on the internet, I found Greg Banson's uh, legacy, a powerful legacy uh, against the uh, skeptics. Uh, and um, I really thank god for for his ministry and uh you know i really i'm really really grateful for for the calvinistic theology behind greg banson as well i'm grateful to the dutch reformed theologians i'm grateful for to the princeton theologians i'm grateful to people like cornelius van til this is my heritage and i'm so thankful for that heritage and i'm rediscovering it recently getting back to reading the Westminster Confession of Faith, getting back to reading the Dutch Reformed theologians, getting back to reading my Calvinistic heritage. And it's been a thrill and a tremendous encouragement to me. And Greg Banson's ministry has been a tremendous encouragement to me. So God is good. I wish everybody uh, a happy new year. Have a great new year. And again, if anybody, if any professional atheist out there who wants to engage with me or um, Dr. Jones on his uh, Covenant Media, uh, if you want to engage with me with some of your guys on an academic level, 
please get in touch with me. If you want to, Dan Courtney, if you want to engage with me on an academic level, uh, Dan Barker, Richard Carey, if you want to engage with me on an academic level, let me know. Give me a few weeks to prepare. May, may Allow it to be fair in the debate and discussion, and you'll find that you'll have trouble in answering many of the questions that I'll put to you on whatever topic you want to, to present. But again, I want to thank Bernie uh, for the courage to debate me and discuss with me, because I know that he'll get a lot of he'll get a lot of criticism for doing what he did. The argument will go: you, you're legitimizing Jason. You're legitimizing this crank who's crazy. That's the rhetoric. That's the way of trying to minimize academic freedom and discussion. Uh, there isn't anybody on YouTube really who's debating and discussing apart from Matt Slick and maybe one or two others that has any real qualifications in what they're doing. I have actual qualifications from Manchester University, so I'm qualified to debate on the resurrection of Christ from an academic point of view. Um, I'm qualified to debate on Christian theology and things like that, not just... Um, in terms of ability, but I'm actually qualified to do these and they don't want people who are qualified to actually engage because they don't want, they want to try and pick on people who who are not qualified, who were not prepared or able to defend in a, in a proper academic way. And they want to pick on those. And then anybody like me who is qualified and, and who was vulnerable at the time because I wasn't at my best, I was going through a difficult time to jump on that and, and, and jump on that vulnerability and use that vulnerability against them. So please check out my website, jasonburnspreacher.com. There's a lot of good stuff on there. I'll be writing papers and articles in the next few weeks, and I'll be put it, posting them there. So you'll be able to download my articles and essays and, and lectures. Uh, and I'll be developing that site. And I hope that if you go onto my Twitter account, you'll see the kind of videos that I like. I'll be putting links to PDF papers that I write over the coming weeks. And um, I'll be building um, a platform with other Christian apologists and getting to know them and, and trying to encourage them. And I'll be preaching on a regular basis and uh, doing stuff on, on YouTube where I'm preaching and teaching the Bible. So please get in touch with me. Please stay, stay around uh, and see how it goes. And, and please encourage me and, and pray for me. But also watch my back. And I, I would ask people, even in the skeptical community, to please rally around me and to make sure that these people who are really uh, not wanting academic freedom to, to, to put moral pressure on them and say, you know, leave this guy alone. Let us debate him. Let him stand on his own merits. Let us see if he's got the academic scholarship. Let us see that. And if he hasn't got it, then we've won the day. And if he has, then we need to up the ante. We need to up the game and we need to go and research and deal with this guy rather than try to minimize him, blacklist him, blackmail, black, blacklist the guy, sideline the guy. Uh, undermine the guy by taking advantage of a, of a difficult time in his life that he had uh, rather than engage with him on a on a proper academic footing. Again, that Matt Delunty, I mean, if you want to engage with me, uh, please get in touch. Okay, and if you don't want to engage, don't worry about it. You don't have to. It's a free world. It's a free country. I, I challenge the Muslim community, the Muslim academics out there, if you want to engage with me, or any other academics, whether it be Hinduist, Buddhist, I'd love to talk to you, New Age, whatever your position is, I would love to talk to you, I'd love to engage with you. I like, I prefer formal academic debates because I like to, to research stuff before I get into a discussion. So I really enjoy that. So maybe from time to time, in the next six months, we'll you know, maybe I'll have a couple of discussions. Uh, but generally, I'll be preaching and, and what have you. So I hope you enjoy the debate with Bernie. It's on my main page of this channel. And uh, I look forward to 
to uh, keeping my profile on YouTube from time to time, doing sermons, doing lectures. And uh, I will be setting up a YouTube channel where I'll be putting uh, all my videos on and you'll be able to see them. But that, that's a project that'll take a few months uh, to do because there were so many videos that I had. So, you know, it'll take quite a bit of time to to build that uh, YouTube channel up. I have a small YouTube channel that I use uh, and this channel from time to time. And um, there is an archive. There are two archive channels. There's one that I don't like because they allow abuse on. There's another one that I, I don't I don't particularly agree with, but they do try to put my videos in timeline which uh, if you find that channel uh, you'll be able to see my scholarly videos as well uh, there but eventually I need my own channel where I can put all my scholarly videos and other videos there there's about 2,000 videos that I've done and eventually I want to get them all on one channel and uh, that that's my aim in in the next few months uh, to do that and, and then you can see the progression and the development of of my youtube career in an honest and fair light so we'll see how that goes that that's a a big project to do my main issue at the moment is church planting and evangelism and um i'm enjoying my website and uh i, I want to do some writing for it write some articles and and essays and, and stuff like that and um you know, so look out for me on Twitter, look out for me on Facebook, look out for me on my website, jasonbirdspreacher.com, uh, and uh, support me in prayer, and I value uh, your prayer. So thanks for listening. It's good to be with you, and, and God bless you. God is good, uh, and and keep 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 um, keep looking to the Lord, and you know, have a great New Year. I'm just going to sing a song and uh, I just want to share a few thoughts as well. Excuse me. I just want to share a few thoughts just to say that when I was at seminary, we did New Testament Greek, and uh, I forgot, I've forgotten everything about New Testament Greek that we did at seminary. But uh, recently, I started uh, studying New Testament Greek with a, uh, a friend of mine, a dear friend who who's, uh, knows Greek extremely well. So we meet up every week, and we're studying Greek. And uh, I want to recommend this book. It's a uh, John W. Wayneham and um, Cambridge University Press. If you want to study Greek, uh, it's a really helpful book. Really, really helpful in in studying Greek. Uh, I'm just trying to think. Is the other one? There's another one that I have, but this is the one. Yeah, this is the one that we're using. Uh, that we're going through um, so yeah so if you want to get a book on Greek and you want to study New Testament Greek that's the book to to study so I'm going to sing a song and then I'm just going to give a devotional uh, thought uh, again check out Greg Banson uh, check out uh, the website true forms um, I think it's true form and um, it's a great website it's got lots of Greg Banson stuff then Covenant Media um, not new Covenant Media but Covenant Media I think uh, they have a lot of Greg Banson's lectures there that you can buy and also uh, many of his papers um, and also presuppositional apologetics one-on-one -on -one, or presuppositionalism one-on-one -on -one. also check out these scholars, Doug Wilson. Uh, if you look at Doug Wilson on Canon Wire, he's written a good article recently uh, critiquing Richard Dawkins, which is really good. Uh, 
also John Frame. And then if you go on my website, jasonburnspreacher.com and Google Apologetic, look at Apologetics page. There's a, there's a whole course on presuppositional apologetics there. Uh, there's about 30 uh, lectures there, which are really, really good and helpful. Um, check out Cornelius Van Til. There's a lot of his uh, papers that you can download on presuppositional one or presupposition as a one on one. Um, so those are some of the uh, information that you can get on the transcendental argument. There's some good lectures around if you Google on YouTube on the transcendental argument by various academics as well, uh, which I, I I listened to one or two when I was uh, before I had a chat with Bernie. Um, so. So there we are. So I'm going to sing a song and then leave you. Have a good, happy new year. Have a great new year. Uh, you know, I, for me, these are, the, these are the best days of my life. I'm really uh, at a place where I'm really growing in the Lord, in my, in my spiritual life. I'm really uh, enjoying the Christian life, the joy in the Lord, the strength in the Lord. It's just getting more and more in my life, you know, and I, I, I just feel so blessed in knowing the Lord. It's just wonderful, really. It's just just absolutely a blessing to know the Lord. And uh, I'm just so encouraged uh, in, in, in my walk with the Lord. You know, God is so good. And, uh, you know, we all have our trials and difficulties, but God is so good. And I'm so blessed, so blessed to... To be saved so blessed to be born again and i want to sing a song and i want to read a scripture give you a thought and then we'll move on i think we'll sing that give me O side O savior of thy wondrous love to me of the love that brought thee down to earth to die on calvary Oh, make me understand it. Help me to take it in. What it meant to thee, the Holy One, to bear away my sin. Was it the nails, O oh Savior, that bound thee to the tree? In it was thine everlasting love, thy love for me, for me. Oh, make me understand it, help me to take it in. What it meant to thee, the Holy One, to bear away my sin. O oh, wonder of all oh, wonders, that through thy death for me, my open sins, my secret sins, can all forgiven be. O oh, make me understand it, help me to take it in, what it meant to thee. The Holy One to bear away my sin. Then melt my heart, O Savior. Bend me, yes, break me down. Until I own the conqueror and Lord and sovereign crown. Oh, make me understand it. Help me to take it in, oh, what it meant to thee, the Holy One, to bear away my sin. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. King of kings, Lord of lords, praise him, his holy name. I wanted to share with you a little thought. It says in Romans 8, verse 1, There is there found now no condemnation 
to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. I want to just say this to you. People can label you whatever they want. They can label you in any way they want, but it doesn't matter. It's how God labels you. It's how God or what God says about you that is important. Yeah? They can label you as mad. They can label you as a failure. Uh, they can label you in whatever way they want to label you. But at the end of the day, it's what God says about you. It's how God labels you. And it says in the word of God in Romans 8 verse 1, there is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. In Christ, you are forgiven, cleansed, restored. You are a child of God. You are not defined by your past, past failures. You are not defined by your mistakes. You are not defined by how even you label yourself. You might say, oh, I'm thick, or oh, I'm fat, or I'm this, or I'm that, or whatever it is. Or I've failed as a father, or I've failed as a mother, or I've failed as a wife, or I've failed as a husband. You might label yourself whatever way you want to label yourself in a negative way. God gets the final say about you, and he labels you, if you know Christ, as forgiven, cleansed, and restored. There is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. And you've got to walk in that today. You've got to walk in the grace of God. You've got to walk in who God says who you are today. You are not a failure. You are not a person that is walking around in your negativity. You're not a person who, who is defined by your past. You are a person right now cleansed by the blood of the Lamb and restored in the blood of the Lamb. And you can come before the Father God today and say, Abba, Father, read Romans 8. If you get a chance, read Romans 8 today. And keep reading Romans 8. It says there is now no condemnation. It says all things work together for good to them that love God. That is who you're defined by today. You're defined by the grace and love of God today. Walk in that love today. God has a work for you to do. God has a plan for you today. The enemy is not going to take you down. The enemy is not going to strip you of that. The enemy is not going to take that away from you. You are secure in Christ. You are secure in the blood of Christ. You are secure in the love of God today. And it might not seem that everything is okay in your life. It might not seem perfect. But I guarantee to you today that God will guide you, supply for you, and help you, and make a way for you today because you're no longer defined by your past. You're no longer defined by your mistakes. You are defined by the grace and the love of God in Christ Jesus. That's where you stand today. That is the ground that you stand today. That is your default position today. As you go into the new year, look at that. Think about that. Meditate on that. R dwell on that. You are a child of God today. And don't let the enemy take that away from you today. My friend, do not be in despair. Do not be discouraged. Do not feel it's all over. It's only just beginning. There is a blessed future for you. And God is guiding you and leading you. And he will bless you because you are saved by the blood of Christ. There is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. You are not condemned anymore. You are washed in the blood. And if the Father forgives you, if the Father cleanses you, who is he or who is she that would judge you? My friend, do not be labeled by the labels you put upon yourself. Do not be labeled by the labels people put upon you. Be labeled by the word of God. And the word of God labels you today as no condemnation. It labels you as a new creature in Christ. It labels you as saved and born again. It labels you as justified by faith. 
That's what it has said to you today. So stand on the word of God. Walk in the word of God. Go forward in the work of God. Serve in the work of God. Live in the work of God. Go forward in the work of God. That's what I would say to you today, my friend. My friend, do not allow anybody to label you or you label even yourself. Let the word of God label you. And the word of God tells you today there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. When the negative thoughts come, when the dark thoughts come, when you look at the future and it seems bleak sometimes because you're going through a difficult time, remember there is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. That is your default position. That is what defines you today. The blood of the Lamb. You are washed in the blood of the Lamb. And the blood of the Lamb cleanses you today. So stand in that blood today. Stand in the blood of the Lamb. Stand in that blood. Stand in the grace of God. You are covered in the grace of God today. There is power, power, oh, underworking power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, oh, underworking power in the blood of the Lamb. There is peace. Peace, oh, underworking peace in the blood of the Lamb. There is peace, peace, oh, underworking peace in the blood of the Lamb. There is joy, joy, oh, underworking joy in the blood of the lamb there is joy joy oh underworking joy in the blood of the lamb there is grace grace oh underworking grace in the blood of the lamb there is grace grace Oh, underworking grace in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. God's good. So stay strong. Go forward. Realize there is now no condemnation in Christ. Serve the Lord. Trust in him and it'll be okay. God is with you. God is with you. And he'll make a way for you. He'll show you the way. And it might seem difficult, but there is joy in the Lord. There is joy from God. There is strength from God. You have the liberty of coming into the presence of God by the blood of the Lamb. Remember in the Old Testament, the Jews had to sacrifice animals and they had to go into the temple. But now you can go through the blood of Christ. You can go into the Holy of Holies through that blood. That is who you are today. You can come into the presence of the living God through that blood. You are now in access, in open access to the living God. And you can cry, Abba, Father. You can praise him and worship him and adore him. And no matter if there's a bomb goes off, no matter if there's a nuclear war, you are in the presence of God. You are with God. You can know God and be with God forever. So you're safe in the arms of God. You have all things in God. You have all things in him. For you have Christ. So don't worry today. You are not going to be defeated. You are not going to be pulled down. You are not going to fall by the wayside. You are not going to be forgotten. You are not going to be down and labeled by the thoughts of your mind or the thoughts of others. You are not going to do that because the almighty God who created the heavens and the universe, who created the galaxies, this God is your God, and he stands with you today. He stands with you today. He stands with you, and no might, no power, nothing will ever take you out of his hands. They can come with all the clever arguments they can. You can go through the most difficult suffering in life, but nothing is going to take you out of the palm of God's hand today. 
Nothing is going to take you away from the love of God. Nothing is going to take you out of the love of God. You are the apple of his eye today. You are the you are covered in the grace and love of God. It says in the word of God in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3, he is the God of all comfort. And God surrounds you today and he comforts you and he's there with you right now. And though you might go through the valley of the shadow of death, though you might have been stripped and pulled down and broken in life, God is with you. God goes with you. God is on your side. He is on your side and he'll make a way for you, my sister. He'll make a way for you, my brother. He'll make a way for you. And no man or no woman or nothing will ever strip you or take you down because you walk in God God is with you and God is on your side they stripped Joseph down they pulled Joseph down they took him down by jealousy do you remember that it was jealousy and jealousy ripped the heart of Joseph out he started with pride do you remember he had pride and he said, look at my coat in many colors. Aren't I a goody, goody tissue? And his brothers didn't like his pride and they took him down. And they sold him for, as a slave. And then he went and worked in Potiphar's house and he was accused falsely of sleeping with Potiphar's wife. Then he ends up going in prison. Do you remember that? While in prison, he has a, 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 he, 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 he was able to read the Pharaoh's dreams. He's able to read the cook's dream and the baker's dream and all the rest of it. And he ends up that one of them, I don't know if it was the cook or the baker, but they got out of, of prison and they told Pharaoh about F Joseph who could read the dreams. And Joseph goes to Pharaoh, reads his dream and ends up becoming the prime minister of Egypt. And his brothers one day come into Egypt and it's a famine. And Joseph has saved food for the people of Egypt and his brothers come and they, they come to the palace and they meet this guy and they talk with him. And then they realize it's their brother. And they realize their jealousy is the one that had done this to their brother. And now their brother stands before them. And what did Joseph say? Was he full of bitterness? Was he full of anger? He said, no, God, you meant it for harm, but God meant it for good. And we can fail, we can make mistakes, we can have pride and go down and make mistakes and people can pull us down and we can break ourselves with our own stupidity and we can fail and we can mess and we can have all the muck that comes out of our lives and spills over into a car crash and into a mess. But God is over the mess. He's over the car crash. He is the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. He is the God of Joseph and God meant it for good. And he will take every mess that you've made. He'll take every problem that you've made. And he will turn it around for his glory. And he is making you into something beautiful. He is making you into a child that is walking humbly, lovingly, gently. He is making you into somebody patient, somebody tender, somebody who is better than before. And all the time he's working it out. All the time he has your steps ordered my friend so do not live in the cloud of darkness do not live in the cloud of no hope do not live in that anymore the clouds may be over your head sister the clouds may be over your head brother but the god of the created world god of the universe is over it and that god is the god of abraham Oh, the God of Abraham prays. He is the God over your cloud. He is the God with love. He is the God of grace. He is the God of love. He is the almighty God, and he will not let you fall to the ground. And you'll look back at your life, and you'll say, Oh, God, how great thou art. Oh, God, you are greater than I could ever imagine. You are greater than I ever thought. You are greater than I ever, ever, ever knew. You are so awesome. You are so great. You know what to do in my life. You allowed it for good to work its purposes out in me so that I could walk 
humbly and lovingly and joyfully in my God. We have a great God. We have an awesome God. We have a mighty God. And you ain't going down, sister. And you ain't going down, brother. It's only just beginning. It's only just beginning. An unconquerable covenant love is holding you right now. There are steel girders under your body holding you up that will not break. And it is the love of God through the cross. He came and suffered on that cross and was nailed to that cross with a crown of thorns upon his head. Nailed to that cross. And a crown of thorns on his head. And he took the wrath that you deserved. And you're cleansed in that blood. You're cleansed in the Messiah's blood. You're cleansed in that blood. And you are on the other side. You're on the side of blessing. You're on the side of no condemnation. You are on the side of joy. You are on the side of glory. You are on the side of knowing the living God. That's where you are. You're on that side. I'm sorry if you think I'm shouting in as I'm preaching, but I cannot, 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 I cannot hide the joy, the sense of glory, the sense of blessing, the sense of knowing such a great God. If I'm shouting, it is because my heart is full of the joy and the blessing of knowing God. And I want you to see how great this God is. How awesome this God is. How wonderful this God is. How mighty this God is. And how this God is here right now for you. You are on the other side. There is now no condemnation. The windows of heaven is with you. The windows of his blessing are with you. And yes, it is tough. Yes, it is difficult. But the joy of the Lord is your strength. You have a, 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 an unspeakable joy today in God. Joy full of glory. Joy unspeakable and full of glory today. And you are mightily blessed. Mightily blessed today. You are truly, truly blessed. And it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Excuse me. It'll be okay. Let's pray. Dear God, we come before you today. We confess our sin and we acknowledge our guilt. We acknowledge, oh God, our pride. We acknowledge, oh God, how we fail and make mistakes. Lord, we confess every failure and every sin and every weakness of our hearts. We confess every foolish way, every blindness of heart. We confess it, Lord. We ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your cleansing. We ask for your mercy. We're sinners, O oh God. And we come to you, O oh God, and ask for your cleansing and mercy. But Lord, we thank you that you are a God who is our Father. We thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that we can come before you and praise you, Father, that you are our Father today. We thank you for the year that has gone. It has not been an easy year, but it has been a blessed year because it has had you in it, Lord. And we praise you and thank you for your wonderful patience with us, how we have failed, how we make mistakes. But yet, Father, how patient you are with us. Father, we thank you for the good gifts that you give us. We thank you for all the provision that you have given us in our lives. We thank you, Lord, that you know the steps that we are to take and you will guide each one of us. Father, we thank you. Thank you for all these blessings. You are truly a wonderful God. And we thank you, Father, for the joy and the peace. Father, we pray for your people today. Give them strength. We pray for your church today. Strengthen them worldwide. We pray that you would help us to serve you and to go forward. We pray against the enemy and his devices that they will fall to the ground worldwide, internationally, nationally, locally, 
on the internet, wherever. Father, may the enemy and his devices be pulled down in the name of Jesus Christ. And so, God, we come to you today and we praise your holy name. Bless those who hear this video. Those who do not know you, may <coughs> they come to believe and trust in you. May they rest in you. May they find peace in you. And so, God, we praise you. God, we adore you. We give you the glory today. And we commit everything to you today. We trust in you. We praise you today, Lord. And we thank you, Father, for your love. And we thank you, Father, for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Father, thank you. Thank you so much for this forgiveness. Thank you so much for this joy. Thank you so much that you're patient with us. Thank you so much that though we go through the valley, though we may be in a valley today, maybe somebody here is in a valley and it's a dark time, but though we go through those dark times, you will carry us. You will keep us. You will help us. So, God, thank you. Thank you for this day. Bless this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. And I uh, hope to see you again uh, sometime. I'm going to have a rest uh, for uh, uh, a few days. But uh, if I've got a sermon or if I've got a message, I might preach it from time to time. So thank you for listening. God bless you. Have a lovely day. Have a happy new year. And don't forget to research Greg Banson. And uh, keep in touch. God bless you. And uh, take care. God bless.